So network gossip protocol. How does data propagate on the network layer? What are the mechanisms? How does uh, a message get translated, uh, transported from A to B to C? How does this work? So what happens in most um, permissionless blockchains is uh, so-called broadcast or gossip propagation. It means if one node A here uh, knows or creates a transaction or knows or creates a block, and then it sends this towards its its neighbors, right, that are connected. And then it's just propagated further in the network. Um, if you look at the network propagation here, you can see uh, on the x-axis the time since uh, some object was first ob uh, observed, and this object in this particular case is a block. And this is uh, here uh, time axis uh, in T. And here you have a uh, density function that tells you how long it takes, right? So you can see here, uh, this is like there are many peers that basically receive your uh, uh, a block uh, rather early, but it can also happen that uh, it takes up to 50 or 60 seconds for a block to, to be propagated to, uh, to a particular node. So, and this is because of this broadcast propagation. So some peers are just at the edge of the network uh, where or it just takes a lo lot of time to for, for them to receive that data. Um, what's interesting, you can look here at the 50th percentile or the 95th percentile. So you want to know how, how much percent of the network actually receives the block um, within what time. And this goes back to the um, uh, timing models that we've looked in the consensus protocol. Um, to understand what's kind of the the upper bound of time that it takes for for a peer to receive a, a block or a transaction or a message in general. So in Bitcoin, and there are four propagation methods. Um, there's the standard one. The standard one is you first send the hash of an object. So that's the hash of a transaction or the block. So it's the, the identifier in a sense, so a cryptographic hash. Then if the recipient doesn't know about this hash, then it requests the object. So it's a so-called an inf message, and then it's a get message, and then it's the, the transaction, for example. Right. So that's the three-way exchange. That's the standard three-way exchange when you receive a, a transaction or a block. Right. So here these are being... A and B, the, the two peers that are exchanging the data. So INF stands for inventory, and this is the this contains typically the hash um, of the transaction or the block. So the second method, so this is the first is the standard one. The second method is to send headers. Um, so if you um, if you want to receive a block, right, the block is made up of the header and the block contents. So you first basically send the header, and then second, you send the block contents. Um, the advantage is that the block header in Bitcoin at least is like about 80 bytes in size. So it's quite small. In, in Ethereum, it's slightly bigger because we have these, um, these roots, these uh, Merkle tree roots, uh, several Merkle tree roots in there. Um, but it's the same approach, right? So you can use also the send headers approach. And then there's the unsolicited block push. So if A is a miner and he just found a block, right, then he will naturally forward this block to B, right? So um, he doesn't need to send like an inf message uh, and then wait for B to send a get message because he, he literally created this block. He's the first peer that's aware of this block. So he will just send this whole block. So we can get rid of these first two messages. And then there's a fourth method for propagation of um, in the in the Bitcoin network, and this is like a, an orthogonal uh, additional mechanism that does not exist. Um, yeah, I mean it's basically a, a second network that allows you to um, to relay blocks or transactions, and that's uh, optimized for miners in particular. So miners are really keen on on having uh, such a such a network uh, because for miners it it does matter the faster they receive uh, transactions or blocks, the better for them in the mining process.
Um, if they are outdated, they, they lose money. So the standard transaction block advertisement is here quite simple, right? You have this broadcast uh, where a peer is sending the hash to these different nodes. And then there's the get transaction, and here is the transaction block. What's important is that this data is only requested from one peer at a time. And why do we think, so if, if, you, if you receive a hash message from multiple peers, right? So here, if you receive this, the same hash from multiple peers, you will only send a get transaction to one of those peers, typically to the, the one that sent you the hash first. And now pause the video for a second and think to yourself, why is that? Why do we only request data from one peer only? Well, that's is that's because um, you want to optimize, you want to minimize the bandwidth consumption of the whole peer-to-peer -peer network. If this node here would send a get message here, a get message here, and a get message here, it would duplicate. It would uh, duplicate the the bandwidth that is required to to update this particular peer here. And this increases the, the bandwidth consumption of the, the whole peer-to-peer -peer network in relation to the number of peers that each node has. And since, since then, it would not scale. So it's kind of a scaling optimization uh, to, to minimize the propagated data. Good. So now let's look at the send headers block advertisement. So a header in Bitcoin, as I mentioned, is about 80 bytes. And the hash of it is only about 36 bytes. So we're sending here the head of the block, then get block, and then the block. So the unsolicited block push looks like this, right? We have the miner, he's aware of the block, and he's just sending this block to the, to the other peer because he's the only peer that's aware of this block. So he, he knows that uh, this peer B here doesn't need to request this particular block. Nobody else knows about the block. And then lastly, there's Bitcoin Fiber. So uh, Fiber node sends a short block sketch to, to its peers. So this is kind of a list of short hashes and, and their length. Uh, sketch meaning it's not necessarily complete uh, because it's, it, you, you want to send as little data as possible, right? You don't want to, to send the, the precise information. You want, you want to optimize what, what is sent around. So then the receiver can reconstruct the block based on the memory pool. So memory pool is the, the pool of, of unconfirmed transaction. And then you want to construct the block with, uh, with holes. So something that is missing, right? That you want to, uh, to be filled by, by data that you receive from other peers. So and then fiber sender, they break the blocks into, into chunks and they send error correcting data. And then the receiver can construct the block without the sender knowing what's missing. Because with the error correction data, you can, you can then fill those holes in the block that you created based on the knowledge of your memory pool. And then once, um, once you received uh, here those chunks, uh, you can reconst you can reconstruct the block, and the fire and the fiber nodes can then emit novel chunks. So you can you can create uh, randomly novel chunks so that there's l no redundancy. And if a node receives different error correction data, they are all useful. So it minimizes the use less data that's broadcast in the in the peer to peer network. The fiber network also is UDP based, and this basically uh, means there's no ramp up. So that's a that's a TCP um, tech, uh, bottleneck. That TCP connection window has to ramp up, uh, but we won't go further into this in uh, here so far. So you can also check out here on uh, the BIP one five the big Bitcoin improvement proposal one five two, if you want to know more details about the fiber network.